right. Um, place your orders now. Uh, we're shipping on uh, Monday. It's holiday, so get your orders in as soon as you can. Monday, the uh, carrier services are mostly closed, so your order wouldn't go until Tuesday, but order now. We'll go out tomorrow. Yeah. Um, first up, it's coming Hackspace soon. Magazine. Coming soon. You can sign up. Uh, we're getting a batch of these. The reason is uh, we wanted some to uh, give to our team because it's the feather cover, Discover Feather, and it's also um, from our friends over at Hackspace. Yay. So it's coming soon. Next up. Okay. Wires. Not just any wire. Rainbow wires. Um, I love wire wrapping wire for, you know, bodge wiring or, like, fixing up or just, like, wearables or whatever. So this wire wrap wire is uh, super thin. It's a 30 wire gauge and you get eight colors. So like normally you have like one color in this like gigantic spool, but then what if you have like multiple different uh, connections you want to make? Well, what's really nice is that this comes with um, multiple colors. So you get a red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, brown, black, and I don't know if I missed one, but basically eight total. Um, so all the standard colors. Uh, it's 30 gauge solid core. It's easy to solder to. It's easy to work with. So um, this is now my favorite new wire wrapping wire because like I cut off a different color each time. So I don't have like six blue wires. I'm like, which one is data? Which one's power? It's like much, much easier uh, with one spool. You only need one spool. Okay. Next up. Okay. Next up, these adorable little PIR sensors. Oh, they're so cute. Um, this little PIR sensor is interesting. It's a fully integrated PIR module, but like in a tin. Um, so normally you get like a PIR module that has like the, the you know, infrared sensor and there's like a lens and then there's circuitry and then there's a logic level adjustment, all that good stuff. So it's really interesting about these PIRs is first off, there's two, uh, there's one on the left with the BL412, that's a, the large um, window. And then the one on the right is the BS412, narrower, smaller window. So like I tried both, they both seem to work pretty well, but I know yeah. if people have preference, I you know, decided to carry both. So what's neat is you can see here on this demo, you only need power and ground, and then a third pin is like on time, like how long the output stays high. Uh, in this case, I've just grounded it, that's the third black wire. And then an output pin that goes high when it detects something. And that's it. I mean, like there's no additional circuitry required. It runs off of three volts, so just make sure you're powering up with three volts, they'll give you three volt logic. Um, but they're really simple, they're really inexpensive, and they're really small. Then I don't have the range and flexibility of the larger modules, but there's something just adorable about like, you just give it power and ground and the signal comes out and that's it. Maybe you have a resistor uh, to set the on yeah. time, but it's like very most easy. projects, this is gonna work out fine. Yeah, for most projects, yeah. this is great. And then if you need to upgrade to like the larger PIR sensor, you can. Um, so good for like, you know, three to five meters distance. And we give you a little lens cap that I think gives you like either 100 or 120. Um, uh, degree range. Yeah. All right, next up. Next up, a whole bunch of SMA and RPSMA through hole connectors. We've had the SMT version of these connectors, but uh, some folks were like, hey, I'm, I'm doing through hole. This is a common uh, pinout kind of connector for um, RF work. It's good for any frequency. Yeah, I got a few out here. So you got a couple different ones. You've got the right angle, so that's this one. Yeah. And this is the SMA version. And then uh, I think uh, yeah, this is the, the straight, so the up and down. And then we also have an RPSMA one, uh, right angle. So RPSMA is usually used for uh, Wi-Fi oh, yes. connectors. Oh, yes. So just check the polarity of your cable. Um, these are yes. really generic. Uh, we found uh, CAD, you know, every CAD platform seems to have a, a package for like generic through hole um, SMA connector for RF. Okay, next up. Great. Next up, uh, new from Fab, uh, somebody emails and said, hey, you have the NPM 3610 buck converter to three volts at one amp. Why don't you do it for five volts? I'm like, yeah, you're right. Why don't I? So we made a five volt version, uh, which has the resistor set for five volt output. So what's really nice is it's a fully integrated buck converter. So that big you know, rectangle in the center, that con contains the circuitry and the inductor, as well as, of course, the, the transistor. Uh, to, to switch the higher voltage down to the lower voltage. You can give it up to 21 volts, which is really nice. A lot of uh, buck converters don't go that high. They often top out at like nine or 12 volts. This one goes up to 21. So like you're, you're not gonna run out of volts. You get all the volts in the world and it'll give you five volts out nice and clean and up to 1.2 amps. Although you can kind of push it a little bit. You can sometimes get a little bit more. Um, and that's like, you know, constant 
current draw, you could probably spike a little bit as well. It's inexpensive, it's small, it's light, and the inductor is integrated, so you don't have to worry about it cracking. So it's a great little buck converter if you want five volts out. And of course, we also have the three volt version if you want one of those. Next up. Next up is the robot from Elect Freaks. This is the cute bot, and it's cute. This cute bot is uh, designed to be used with a micro bit. Uh, we'll also be writing some code to make it work with a clue. But pretty much anything that has a micro bit, you know, plug and play shape. Um, it's very, very capable robot. It's not too expensive. It's like 30 bucks or so. Uh, you, all you need is three AAA batteries. It comes with a sonar sensor. You plug the micro bit in and it even has a booklet and online tutorials that will take you through making your own little robot with obstacle avoidance, line following. Um, you know, there's an infrared remote reader on the back. I thought maybe I would actually show off some of this on the overhead because there's, there's a lot going on with this robot. So, okay. So it doesn't come with a AAA battery, so you'll need to include those. I'm using uh, rechargeables. You can use alkalines. Um, you can just use any micro bit and plug it in here. There's an on-off switch in the back. Um, in this case, I just have it kind of rolling around. There's uh, some LEDs. This is a line following sensor on the bottom here. Um, and it has these debug LEDs, so when I cover up the line sensor, uh, it lets you know. Um, this is a ultrasonic distance sensor, so you can use this, um, you know, to keep it from uh, rolling into a wall or uh, bumping into a hand. There's two RGB LEDs here. Turn this off. Two RGB LEDs here. Two NeoPixels on the bottom. Cute bot. Uh, two Metal Gear and 20 motors that can uh, be speed controlled. Um, infrared. Receiver is on the back here, so you can uh, use an infrared remote to control it. And um, there's some headers here for connecting additional sensors, like power ground, uh, you know, switches or servos or what have you. Um, there's a port for the sonar, and the sonar comes uh, pre-assembled, so you just plug it in. And then there's also an I2C port, so you can add additional sensors if you'd like. Um, the booklet it comes with. Um, is for make code, so it's really easy. It's for beginners. Um, just go through the lessons. You can uh, use the display to display stuff. You can read sensor data. You can turn on lamps. Um, it's a kind of a cute little book, and uh, it, the text is also online. So you can, if, you know, if you're stuck with something, you can go online and just copy and paste the code. It also comes with a. Um, this is kind of uh, common. It's a line following uh, practice sheet. So you unfold it, you put the robot on it, and you write the line following example, and the robot follows the line if you did a good job. So it's a cute bot. It's very cute. I do want to mention it doesn't come with a micro bit or batteries. We do stock those, but you'll have to um, get them separately. It comes with just the bot. Cable. Next up, cable. Uh, it, it's a cute cable. It's uh, a JST PH two pin to two pin cable. Same polarity on both sides. If you're using this with, you know, we have it for uh, use with our um, LiPo fuel gauge. In this case, we want something to plug into the LiPo and then, you know, it to like, like chain onto some other device. So this is good if you want to like jumper between two JST uh, pH connectors. Uh, it's 100 millimeters long, very simple, easy to use cable. So that's the cable. All right, the start of the show tonight, besides you lady to our community, our customers, and our team is the LC709203. So many digits and letters. Um, but this is a very nice little fuel gauge and battery monitor chip. Um, I like this one because it doesn't do coulomb counting. Um, it's, it's simple, it's inexpensive, but it doesn't it require a resistor in line. So it just looks at the voltage of the battery. You tell it how big the battery pack is in uh, milliamp hours. And um, it will then be able to use the voltage that has like the kind of standard LiPo de-weighting de curve, like between voltage and percent full. Um, and it will tell you both the voltage, so it's just a basic analog digital conversion, and also the percent full. It can also do uh, thermistor readings if you, there's a thermistor pin if you'd like. It can set an alert if the voltage goes above or below a certain level. Um, you can just daisy chain it with um, any LiPo battery. So in this case, I just have a, a uh, 
1200 milliamp hour battery. It's plugged into um, the STEMI QT board here. And then I daisy chained using that handy cable that I just showed you into a feather. So now I've got the feather um, running some example code. It's uh, using um, this chip to read the voltage and percentage. And so now it's like, hey, you know, you can see it's updating once a second. It's like you're at about 3.7 volts, which is, uh, you know, th uh, one third of the way. And then if I can grab hold on, this cable, I can show you that, you know, while you're charging, you can also uh, monitor it. So now we're going to see um, this voltage slowly creep up as it gets charged. I'm not going to wait till it gets to 100% because it's going to take a while. Um, it's really easy to use. It's just I squared C. So um, it's a, a simple protocol. We've got both Arduino and uh, Python code to use with it. So you can, um, what I like about it is there's a lot of times where people are like, hey, I have a microcontroller project or a Raspberry Pi or a microcomputer project. I just want to m monitor my battery. Right? I don't want a full ADC. I don't want to do the math. I just want to know how good is my battery life right now. Um, this chip does the job uh, very affordably and very simply. So um, just daisy chain it with any single cell lipoly or lithium ion battery. Run the code and uh, you can monitor your battery with ease. Yeah, tune in to our upcoming show, Lady It Charges Things. Yes. And uh, it's just basically this for... It's very zen. Six or seven hours. At well, a time. maybe after you know we do a couple more things, we'll come back and we'll check in on this and see if it's uh, charged up some more. But it did go sure. up. It's now at three point eight volts. There you go. Okay. All right, and with that, Lady Ada is. New, 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 new.